So admittedly, I've been aware of this Diddy stuff um, mm. since uh, what's her name throughout the lawsuit. Cassie? Yeah, Cassie. Mm-hmm. So since that, I've been like, oh, sh-. I mean, you kind of hear things over the years here and there. But you never mm-hmm. know what's what's rumor and what's real. Uh, it turns mm-hmm. out whenever you hear a rumor, it's real. Um, but was uh, the reach of this, like I'm seeing TikToks where people are analyzing the body language of Justin Bieber. Oh, I got I to gotta change my positioning because the, the white wall is whiting me out. <laughs> so I gotta change my position because I gotta be in go. the right position yeah. when I'm yeah. wearing this. We need, we need, yeah, we need to, to be sure. beautiful yeah. and well lit. Sure yeah, you can't, um, can't, can't white them out. I, here. I gotta no, and it's also hurting my eyes the whiteness. So yeah, uh, I gotta make sure I'm oh, right. You are yeah. podcasting yeah. with me and Zach, so it might be your eyes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So what many are calling the diddler, um, was. What? Man, it's such a broad question, but what's going on with this Diddy stuff? The reach so, is insane. So the Diddler is, that's an elite, probably all-time level nickname, if we're being honest, yeah. for something like this. Um, let's be clear and make a distinction. The stuff that Cassie accused him in of mm-hmm. in her lawsuit where, like, she's having to fuck prostitutes against her will, and Mm -hmm. this guy probably beat her up a couple of times, like, physically assaulted her, and, like, that was, like, super serious. He settled that out of court very quickly, I might add. Um, It was, like, days, right? It was, like, a couple days. So what happened was she came to him and asked for, I think, 15 million or something like that, maybe 20 million, Cause it's like, yo, she don't really got a music career no more. She mm. want to take care of her family, all of that. She spent like over a decade with this dude. It's like, yo, man, I've been through some shit with you, bro. Like, you could give me fifteen million dollars, yeah. Period. And Puff was like, you know, he counter offered it. It was like, fuck out of here. We got eight for you, or mm-hmm. something ridiculous like that. And she said, I right, bet. <laughs> I bet here's, here's a lawsuit bam, on your ass mm-hmm. and like just the stuff she put in this, the complaint this is before deposition before she start pulling out text messages and videos yeah. and pictures the shit that she before laid out on this nigga yeah right oh, oh he said oh next day he had the bread for her and some people are speculating that it was like probably 40 mil at that point Damn. You know, because she tried to do it. She tried to do it the nice way. Mm-hmm. And, you know, his lawyers are probably, fuck out of here. Take me to court, bitch. Yeah. You know how they do. Mm-hmm. I'm the and she was like, I bet. I bet. I got you. And so, whatever. The Cassie thing is separate to me. Then this homie, this producer, aspiring producer guy. If you read the complaint, he's saying that essentially Diddy forced him to live like a rock star. Um, to have sex with prostitutes, to do cocaine, ecstasy, weed, alcohol, mm-hmm. um, to see, and he didn't like it. Um, it's like an X-rated making the band sketch from Chappelle's show. Yes. Right. And in his complaint, the things that I would say is serious allegations, the underage hookers who were forced to be there underage mm-hmm. and get making people take drugs without their consent. Like people mm-hmm. not knowing that the champagne has MDMA in it. Now, right. you know, there are some people who would love to hear something like that at a puff party. Like, Oh, okay. We're doing them. I don't know. Some of those people might be on this podcast. Would love to be like, Oh, there's MDMA in this voof. <laughs> When in Rome, do as the Romans do, right? But if people don't know that Waz's pronunciation of Vuv right there. Viv. Can you give me the last can you give me the last name too? Clico? Okay, that was better. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um Yeah, so those are serious. Mm-hmm. The shit the feds hitting me with human trafficking. I'm not gonna lie, like I used to think human trafficking was one thing. Yeah. Meaning people being coerced or forced into sex work. Right. And basically you're selling them. You're making the proceeds. 
You, it's like you're trafficking drugs, except no, you're trafficking a human. I thought all this time that was human trafficking. That's what my understanding was as well. No, there's a new addendum to human trafficking. Let's rewind to Vince McMahon's situation where they're saying he trafficked a prostitute because he flew her out to do this illegal act, which is prostitution, Mm -hmm. which is now also human trafficking, y'all. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Zach. Yeah, I think I knew and that. I think it was just I did not. Literal I'm literally transportation. just this out now. Yes. Literally transport. You put them in traffic. You traffic. <laughs> well, Got okay. It. All right, Mr. Los Zach. Angeles. <laughs> Zach. Yeah. If you have he to cross traffic. the 405. Oh, you, you no, traffic dude, that's, it. it's trafficking. Chick, oh my God, because I live in the valley. So if a chick if you, comes, if you make from someone El go to the Segundo east side at three p.m. Was, to my crib, did I traffic? Was, was, <laughs> was that's a felony? You asked me to come to the east side. I went and hung out in Eagle Rock with a friend the other day. He trafficked me. <laughs> if that's the case. So all jokes aside, when the feds, who again? Let's not act like these motherfuckers aren't whores for press. They love a famous case. They love Mm -hmm. to do that. When it's like, oh, we're doing human trafficking investigation, meaning possibly what could have been done wrong is this dude flew some hoes out from Colombia. And now he's trafficked humans. I want to see some facts come out. And Because of the last few celebrity-leaning things I've seen, for instance, the Young Thug case, which is a fucking mess at this point. Oh, I don't even know that. Down in ATL. Oh, yeah, he's been locked up since the pandemic. I knew he, well, I knew he was locked. I guess I just don't know anything of why. Oh, my God, son, the state's case is so janky. Mm -hmm. It's it's just like they found some of the most cracked out, crack-headed, and to, like, shit that they can't prove. Oh, if you ever say this YSL slang, like, and then the, you know, Thug's lawyer's like, well, LeBron James has said this shit before on camera. Is he in the gang, too? Like, their case is a joke. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what the feds did to Casanova, the rapper from Brooklyn, their little Rico charge, they, they basically oh, got this guy that. for yeah. selling weed. Yeah. A weed strand of his own that he had from L.A. They got him for selling it in L.A. I mean, in in New York, in Miami. Basically, they got basically what they ended up charging him with selling weed on a Rico deal. Mm -hmm. But they got a rapper. They locked him up. So a lot of the clout chasing I've been seeing the feds doing. The authorities doing or in, in Young Thug's case, the state government doing. Mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, p- present me with some evidence that this, like, something fucked up happened. Some young chicks against their will was, like, sucking dick because Diddy made them, like, yo, put that nigga in jail for that. What, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Well, what about, what about like, there's all these, th- I mean, I have to say, like, look, there's some horrible accusations, some horrible things that I think... We can all agree Diddy did, right? Like, th- like this, this is a bad thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, the, the, the Cassie but, shit. I want to say nine out of ten of that shit, I believe. Yeah. And and I will admit that in tough circumstances, in bad, like, part of my processing of, you know, either my trauma or other people's trauma, like, I'm, I'll make a joke, right? Like, sure. I like it's just like my defense mechanism, whatever. Sure. I'll make a joke. I don't think there's anything funnier than... Meek Mill, okay, he's the describing greatest. how much he loves, he loves. pussy <laughs> and why, and okay. I, like that as a cover for like I'm not <laughs> gay, I didn't do any of this stuff, or I'm not bi, whatever the accusation was. It's been said a lot, and so I'm not like <laughs> creating this joke here. It only makes me think you are. This so, is forty year old virgin, like a bag of sand. Yeah. territory here. Thou doth so, protest too much. Yeah. He's not very good at expressing himself. Rapper. So one of the first what tweets wait, he what, said wait, before, wait, 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 what do you mean? He's a, <laughs> literally a rapper. He's an artist. <laughs> when he's not <laughs> rapping, he's not good at speech. Mm. Um. So one of Is the tweets meek? he put out, 
<laughs> One of the tweets he put out, he said, stop calling to ask me if I'm straight. Which he meant to be, am I straight? Am I good? Like, am I all right? It's just like me. Oh, a homonym strikes again. Like, what are you doing? You might say he's homonym phobic. What are you doing? Stop calling and ask me if I'm straight. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, maybe you meant both. Um, so, all right. So the, the feds raided Sean Diddler Combs, Los Angeles and Miami homes Monday uh, with the recent lawsuits accusing the 54 year old of sexual assault and sex trafficking. Uh, Homeland Security implemented the raid without providing details regarding the case or any charges against Combs. So how much do you like, I do wonder how much is there, right? Like, I think you make a good point about kind of the clout chasing of certain entities in the government and stuff like that. You know, like I, th I think there is some there, but, and not that you can't do it without having anything to go on or anything that you can charge or convict with, but it does make me wonder like, is this guy going away? I also haven't, you know, this is loosely related, but like, he ain't been arrested. Well, didn't he, he like flew to Barbados or something, right? Like, then, but no, <laughs> they they grounded his jet. He tried to oh, fly to okay. the Caribbean. Got they it. grounded his jet. He has not been arrested. Okay. So some people That's are saying, oh, this, yeah. what they did with the raid was a fact-finding mission. Mm -hmm. Basically executed a search warrant type of situation. Yeah. You know, again, like this and dude... With his, the, the, the dude, the producer dude, who's like, yo, you know, there's a lot of gay shit going on with Puff and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. A lot of it to me feels like, yo, I was around you and your boys doing some gay shit. And the way you guys act around it, you don't want it to be out in public. Mm -hmm. So I felt mistreated. Give me some money or I'm going yeah, to publicly. Yeah, you think it's the money grab? Yeah. Cook your ass. I don't want to yeah. say it's a money. I can, like, like I could imagine myself being a straight person, and I feel like this guy can put my career in a certain place. Mm -hmm. And these dudes want to do a bunch of male on male stuff that I have no interest in, but I do want to further my career. Mm -hmm. I could see how that would, you know, person like that would be in like you could injure your mental health mm -hmm. that way. By having to make those decisions and sacrifices and be like, oh, do I let Cuba Gooden Jr. touch my dick? Allegedly. Because Cuba Gooden is, is named in the lawsuit. Zach, I'm not being funny. He's named. I know. I, like, no, I, I, I know. I, know. No, I, literally, I literally saw that. I saw that either this morning or yesterday morning. I can't remember which one. But I, re I remember seeing like, oh, it's like they, I'm like, cool. We just did a Cuba Gooding Jr. Yep. Big time. movie for Cinephobe. Great. This is great time. By the way, um... You know, in the suit, he's like, yo, uh, Puff, Puff showed me a video of my idol, Stevie J, having sex with a man and was mm -hmm. like, yo, don't trip. Even Stevie's doing it type of shit, you know, to make it seem like, oh, you too good for this? Mm -hmm. Your idol's doing it. That's what he's claiming Puff did in there, which I, I don't mind telling you guys. This is a personal story in, in New York City way back in like, I want to say probably 2014-ish, um, maybe even before that, maybe 2013-ish, um, I was at a house party in Bushwick, mm -hmm. and a gay dude, you know, he came on to me. But it was basically like, yo, I'm into you. I'm trying to fuck with you. I was like, bro, I'm, I'm kind of good. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not into that. And I kid you not, the gay dude was like, you too good for this? Kanye fucked me. No cap. I swear to God. That, so that was like his like thing. It's like, how could you be too good for gay sex when Kanye, who's like that's a the man? Good, that's a pretty good point, though. <laughs> I'm not saying it would have swayed me, but I, there's part of me that'd be like, Kanye did it. Like, I mean, I'm not going to do it, like, but I'm like, you just got to think are, about it a little bit more. Like, how are you too good? Like, bro, mm -hmm. don't tell me you too good to try this. And by the way, I'm not saying this that this actually happened to him and the dude. I don't this know. This is what the dude said to you. That's what the dude said, though. Selling point, yeah. So when he says that, like, that kind of rang true to me because of my own personal experience with this shit. Mm -hmm. Where this model white boy dude in Bushwick 
was like, yo, we should fuck because I fuck Kanye. I was Bef- like, before, I mean, like, before we, we start the show, uh, yeah, because we haven't there started any, yet. What's the, what's the funnier, like, how do I phrase this? Like, fervent emotional response. Is it Meek Mill trying to tell everybody, look, like, I'm not gay. I like pussy. Here's what I like about pussy, even though this is a weird description. Apparently, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not good at describing things if I'm not rapping. Or, yes. was. Yeah. or is it the unbridled joy and enthusiasm that 50 Cent seems to be having with all of this? Because mm. <laughs> he is, I mean, this <laughs> Curtis Jackson He's man having is a, field a day. menace. With he's having stuff. a field day. He, I've never seen anyone he's enjoy something having, more. Like he's, he's having he's, too much fun. He's having more fun with this than he did with like Jaw and Firefest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this is a yeah. higher level. So he's always had problems with Puff. Um, uh, for people that don't know, like uh, Mace was signed to this horrible contract with Puff mm-hmm. from the beginning. Even after he retired, he wanted to make a comeback with G Unit, and Fifty was like, "Yo, let's negotiate a deal." So I'm, you know, I'm gonna bring Mace back. Like, let's negotiate. Mm-hmm. And he felt like Puff threw out a number that was completely absurd mm-hmm. in a way that he felt like was kind of like an affront. Like, it was like, oh, you just have no respect for me. Yeah. That you wouldn't even negotiate with me in good faith on this. So that left a bad taste in his mouth. So he's kind of been killing the guy since. Um, but then, and I think what's really got on his nerves was when Puff um, started dating the mother of his his child, mm. his youngest child. Yeah. And ever since then, he's been like, oh, this dude, I got to really, I got to really go at him in public yeah. now. It, and so, yeah, he's having a great time with this. It sounds like Puff has left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. Welcome oh, to the OG Lord Show's Wozni oh edition. I'm Zach oh Harper. Lord. That's Wozni Lambre. That's Anthony Mays. No, that was no good. I don't know. That was too good. Yeah. Well, too good. Uh, <laughs> Phrasing. <laughs> Make sure you subscribe uh, to our Patreon. Patreon.com. <laughs> The things Kanye does it. Uh, who knows if that's true? But uh, you too good for uh, what that. What I wanted to talk about. What I wanted to talk about. <laughs> hey, for all we know, he does. We don't know. We don't know that Kanye does it. You, know? you never know. We don't know stuff. anything about Ye. The story of the week in the betting world in the sports world is twofold. Baseball has their betting scandal right now with Shohei Otani and his interpreter and stealing four and a half million dollars. And somehow, I don't know. There's a lot. I got a lot of questions for Shohei in this, right? But he can thank Jante Porter and the NBA because a little bit of this heat got removed. Once we found out that there is an investigation by the NBA into Jante Porter. So you're wondering what he was betting On games, he was betting against his team. He was betting for his team. What was he doing? We don't know if Jante was betting. (laughs) What we do know is that according to DraftKings, which is the official betting partner of the NBA, that there were two incidents this season, one on January 26th and one on March 20th, I believe, um, in which... The highest payout, and we're talking like five figures, like ten to twenty thousand dollars, right? The highest payout on any bet those two respective nights was under bets on Jante Porter points, rebounds, assists, and three pointers made. Now you're probably thinking, Jante Porter, like he's been killing it like that? No. He's not. He's literally the only big man available for the Raptors. They have been so injured lately that six foot four Garrett Temple has been playing center for them. He had retired Garrett Temple. Yeah. Did he come out of retirement for this? I think so. <laughs> I think so. Because like Pirtle's hurt and they, you know, they traded Siakam. They traded, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. Or the, yeah, a chew is gone. And, you know, they're like they're the really way, Otto Porter and Garrett Temple are the same guy in my brain. Hundred percent. Just yeah. throwing that out there. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> um, and so you all right? Well, some unders hit on a random role player for the Raptors wrong. who are currently tanking and trying to keep their top six protected pick. Right. So 
the breakdown of it. So on January 26th, I believe against the Clippers. It was either against the Clippers or Kings. One, one of these happened against Kings. One of these happened against the Clippers. Um, after the first quarter in which his, I believe his over under numbers were like five and a half points, four and a half uh, rebounds, three and a half assists or something like that. And half a made three pointer. That was his over under numbers that were set that night. Um, he had grabbed like, I think it scored like two points, three points. He grabbed like three or four rebounds. He had an assist and he hadn't attempted a three. And he checked himself out after a few minutes of play in the first quarter. Uh, Re aggravate an eye injury. Now, Tom Haverstrow went through the, the tape, didn't see an eye injury aggravated, re aggravated, doesn't, you know, but whatever. Like, I got an eye injury, can't play the rest of the game, checks out. All the That's unders. Tom does. He's the finder. He could find the eye he injury. Could find it. We need to note that Jonte Porter is related to Michael Porter Jr. Correct. Just know that he's in Correct. that lineage. Correct. It's important. So, the next from the, time this from happened. the House of Porter, the rich and illustrious <laughs> NBA dynasty, of course. Look, man, his brother makes thirty a year. His brother's got got money, and we'll get to that in a little bit. So, the next time that this, I guess, this red flag was raised was back on March twentieth, and in this game, more modest over unders. I think it was like you know seven and a half, four and a half for points and rebounds, and then but like nothing on assists, nothing on three pointers, whatever. He plays maybe two and a half minutes in that game. First quarter, checks himself out, doesn't return. Tummy ache, illness, not feeling good. Now, I believe for neither of these games was he on the injury report, which you do have to disclose that stuff. Like, hey, this dude's feeling sick, might not go. Hey, this dude's got Mm -hmm. an eye injury, might not go. Mm -hmm. Uh, I believe not on the the injury report for both of those games. Here's Mm -hmm. what I think was. Let me put my tinfoil cap on for a second. I think this is... The ideal third eye open betting scandal for the NBA. This is exactly the betting scandal that the NBA wants to hammer down. So if this stuff ends up being true, right? If this, like he's involved in this and there's proof of that and all that shit. Not only will he be banned for life, like he'll be kicked out. I fully believe he will be kicked out of the NBA forever. Um, It's the perfect example because one insignificant player, no offense to Jonte Porter, so you're very good at basketball. You're just not as significant. NBA he's player. on a two-way contract. On a two-way contract. Prorated, with the- he's going to make $411,000 this year. Yes. Or was. Was. <laughs> Maybe still. We don't know. Maybe still. Uh, we don't know what on. the findings of this will be He's yet. done. Stick a fork in him. But let's say they like, you're done forever. How dare you be involved with this kind of shit? One, you're not ruining this kid's financial future. His brother's fucking rich. Yeah. His brother has more than enough money to like support him. Over. I'm sure he could go detail. play in Spain or something though, right? Like they'll take him they'll in touch. the... I don't know if they'll touch him. Mm. I don't know. Mm. China, China might. Will. China will. China Shouts will. to the CCP. Yeah. Yes. Respect. Well, I don't know. Well, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we're going to salute the CCP on this Yo, one. Oh, the red oh, shirt. The red- no, it happened already. It already the happened, chair, Zach. Shouts to Chairman like, Mao. Wait, hold on a second now. This <laughs> oh, is man. not reflective of the, the people's views here. Rev- the cultural revolution. Let's oh, go, baby. Boy. Oh, boy. Um, PCP. We can call that the, re- the, club. Call that the <laughs> reverse demo right there. Oh, uh, my God. <laughs> so, <laughs> free TikTok to hammer him. It didn't affect... It, yeah, I do agree with free TikTok. Uh, I, it didn't affect any real games, right? It didn't affect mm-hmm. any of this stuff. Uh, by the mm-hmm. way, back during, I think, either 2020 or 2021, Jante was not on a roster, and I believe he was on a website or on Twitter promoting, like, college bets, like college basketball bets. And so... Before you go on, Zach, yeah. they found the tweets, his little... His little investment account he's done podcasts about it yeah um he's a crypto bro he is a crypto bro he's a financial advisor and he's like oh i do investments so Mm -hmm. and professional gamblers by the way call what they're doing investments so they do we know (laughs) he's got a mind 
a he's mind got a mind set. for it. Yeah, he's, he's got, got the got mind, a mind for it. Set for it. Yeah. Clearly doesn't have the mind for it. Right. Because he clearly doesn't know how these betting companies work, how right. professional legal books work. Mm -hmm. Which I want to say this in the most gentlest way possible. They're not making build, building these billion dollar casinos because they're giving out payouts. What? That's all I'll say. Okay. So DraftKings is not in the business mm -hmm. of paying people. Hmm. Hmm. Caesar Sportsbook. Hmm. MGM Sportsbook. Mm -hmm. You name casino. The business the is not paying people. Mm. So best believe when they have to pay people, they're going to pay attention. They're going to invest, especially when it's Jonte Porter prop bets. And so the league gets a chance to be like, oh, we're the tough league when it comes to see we've we've embraced gambling. We're going to like, you know, if this is true, we're going to kick him out of the league. He's never going to come back here. This is, you know, we're dropping the hammer. It'll be kind of a fake penalty to do it on a player that doesn't matter. Who's on a team that is not trying to win games, who then you get to show everybody else. Look how look how seriously we're taking this shortly after Rudy Gobert. You know, outright accused. Money, please. Multiple times, double, triple, quadruple down that refs are on the take. Oh, for the vindication for Rudy, man. Is it vindication for Rudy? I don't know he, if that's You don't true. think that Rudy Gobert Rudy, saw well, this will try Dante to, will Porter try story develop? Yeah. Sure. yeah. I yes, when he's on him. the phone with his French buddies, he's definitely saying stupid shit like, I told you, I did, did I tell you? Le Vouv. Papa Bata Le Vouv. Yeah. So, um, do we think this ends? Betting scandals in the NBA? Mm. Just getting started. Just getting I started, yeah. I mean, I don't think that it's impossible that insignificant players could get caught out with this. Yeah. But, again, and I just want people to understand, for it to be worthwhile... Worth the wild of richer players, they have to make bigger bets. Yeah. Which will trip which off flagged. alarms. Yes. Once you start winning, I repeat, I'm trying to spell it out for you, slow people out there. Once you start winning, All in Spanish, alarm bells get set off within these companies. Yeah. Yeah. Ethan's talked about this a lot. They'll straight up lock you out if you're too yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. They will, they will say no thank and you. And I'm not betraying any confidences here because I'm sure he's talked about it publicly too. My man Haralabob was explaining to me how the process by which he had to make bets, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is like a network of beards who make the bets on his behalf because sports books literally banned him. You're, he's, like, he's not even allowed to place a bet with them because right. he's good at it. You understand? Yeah. So, he had to get surrogates yes, on his behalf so that they didn't know it was coming from him. A network of them, Maze, mm -hmm. placing small amounts of bets. Yeah, that's good money, though, if you're one of the circuits and you know that these are, I'm sure you're getting a cut of it. And so, how's, I mean, and even if the people say, well, Jonte Party could have got smart, paid a network. No. Well, here's the thing. He he might not be making bets. He might be in some kind of other kind of trouble. If, like, if this stuff is true, this is him trying to come through for betters. Yeah. This could be something like he's in some kind of like yeah. crypto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Currency thing or whatever. Like, yeah. Dumb shit. Because you wouldn't just do this to do this. You do this if you're in that position. You do <laughs> this most likely, most of the time, any of these like point shaving scandals, betting scandals, it's because they've gotten in trouble 
and now this is the only way to make it up. And then once they got their, their hooks in you, they got their hooks in you. Now there's nothing you can do. But I'm trying to figure out how, again, do, and this is the cool thing about this being legal. It's all legal. It's all trackable. Mm-hmm. It's not the same as bookies who have to get caught first. Right. And then they'd be like, yo, but I got some good information for you. Like, there was a time where we was getting all this action on X, Y, and Z. Or there was a time where I was following Mm -hmm. the action on X, Y, and Z. And it couldn't be other than some, you know, inside job. I'm just trying to figure out how to, let's just say the most popular, let's say Steph Curry, LeBron. How it could ever be worth their while to try to skew, because you just can't. Do you know it uh, once it's being tracked. I don't think you. I don't think you have to go that high. Think of like Bruce Brown. Yeah, Bruce Brown makes twenty million dollars this year, right? Hell no, he ain't doing Malik this. Malik Monk makes eleven or twelve or whatever he makes. Like they're not doing this. The amount of money you would have to then twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, these no. folks noticed it because twenty thousand people was trying to bet twenty thousand. Come on, on Jante Porter prop bets. I That's see people being insane. like, oh, if he was smarter, he could have got this off. He would have to be so damn diligent. Yeah. And again, no, because this is like one of the only things that he can control in the game. Players, don't do it. You're going to get caught. Yeah. You're going to get caught. Yeah. It's real dumb. Hey, Maze, what's our next segment? Yeah. What a fantastic time to transition to our underdog fantasy oh, I love underdog <laughs> combination yes. of the day oh, I love underdog thank you underdog this is a fantasy skill game you go to underdogfantasy.com promo code ding d-i-n-g Woo. or the underdog fantasy app so I'm looking at this nuggets suns game 7 mm-hmm. p.m. pacific yeah yeah we had the very exciting overtime matchup between these two. The last time they played Kevin Durant caught fire in overtime sons won, and I'm looking at Kevin Durant 5.5 first quarter points. So that seems kind of low to me. Mm. And in the last five games, Katie is at 2.8 first quarter points, huh. but for the season, he's at 6.6. First quarter points. You know what they call that, Maze? Regression to the meantime. Something's got to give. Yep. I'm going Kevin Durant higher than 5.5 first quarter points. Real quick. I'm so sorry to tangent this. (laughs) I think I hate the idea of regression to the mean when it's an ascension. I think we should call that progression to the mean. Oh, progression. progression. Yeah. I've always wanted to change that. So maybe we'll start saying progression in the mean. Then people are going to understand it, but it's fine. But I just, regression in the mean, it's, that sounds negative to me, you know? Yeah, it's true. Normally they use it when people are going to drop gonna fall. in their performance. So yeah. here I am taking progression to the mean. Thank progression to the mean, yeah. Professional mm-hmm. writer Zach Harper. Now we're going to focus on one of my favorite rivalries in sport, which is yeah. the Baltic big men Nurkic and Jokic, former oh, teammates, oh yeah, turned rivals. Mm-hmm. Took your spot, bitch. Very unfortunately, I'm not allowed to pick Nurkic fouling out because I you guarantee can't do higher on five and a half fouls. No, I can't. <laughs> it's too bad because I know he's gonna foul out. They played he's twice this season. Foul out this he's game, fouled yeah. out both times. Yeah. That's what happens. Yeah. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna take lower. On 0. 0.5 double doubles. Now I know what you're thinking. Nurkic is a pretty good rebounder, right? Yeah, real good rebounder. And, you know, it's 10 points. That seems doable, but he had Very. one big scoring game against the Nuggets where he Ooh. had six rebounds. And then he had 12 rebounds, but seven points. So Ooh. I'm banking on him not getting enough minutes because okay. he's going to be in foul trouble the whole game yeah. to not make it to double figures for points and rebounds. Give me lower on double doubles for Yusuf Nurkic. And then finally, I like that. Jonte Porter's brother, Michael Porter Jr. 
He's been a little sick in the last week. Oh, going around. And then Jamal Murray has been banged up. So this is, Mm -hmm. this is dependent on Jamal Murray's game time status. Since Jamal Murray has been in and out in the last five games, Jokic has been averaging 11 points in the first quarter. Wow. Doesn't have his point guard. He needs to get it done early, mm. putting the team on his back. And so, he takes his rest in the second quarter, y'all. So mm-hmm. just keep that in mind. Yep. Mm-hmm. So if he's, if Jamal Murray is out, I'm taking Jokic higher than 8.5 first quarter points. If Murray plays, I'm taking lower because his season average is 7.7 first quarter points. And you know what's nice about that? Underdog app, send you alerts about who's out. All three of those together gives you a nice little combination. So go to yeah. underdogfantasy.com, promo code DING, D-I-N-G. You know what's less predictable than a maze combination? Los I Angeles don't. Lakers. Oh. Los Angeles Lakers, guys. Oh. These Lakers, man, I cannot figure them out. They're eight games over 500. They're 40 and 32, right? <laughs> Playing good basketball, right, it seems. <laughs> What's the deal? What's the deal with the Lakers? There's no splash in these links. <laughs> hey, hey, says, have you seen this? Have you heard about this? Have you heard about, have you heard about these Lakers? Have you, have you, seen that? Have you heard about these Lakers? Um, they go into Milwaukee last night. Win in double overtime. No LeBron James. They're two and zero against the Bucks this year without LeBron James. Mm-hmm. Uh, Austin Reeves goes for a triple double. Granted, it was double overtime. You know, uh, AD plays fifty two minutes, has like thirty four and twenty three. D'Lo has like twenty nine points, twelve assists. Like they just ball out against this Bucks team. Maybe we should be killing the Bucks more. But was the record says we should be paying attention to these Lakers, right? I still cannot buy in because I can't get a goddamn handle on them. I'm I'm of two minds with the Lakers. I don't think they have a snowball's chance in hell of doing anything meaningful mm-hmm. against the Denver Nuggets. Mm-hmm. But if LeBron and AD and the rest of these guys are generally healthy... I don't see why they wouldn't give everybody a freaking fight in the playoff series. The problem with the regular season is like LeBron can't play 75 games right. at the best of his current abilities. So the team is going to suffer regular season-wise because of it. Yes, he's one of the best players when he's playing his best. No, he can't consistently do this over the course of 82 freaking games. Mm-hmm. So I think in the playoffs, like like I said, OKC, the Clippers, like I don't see why the Lakers can't beat up these dudes, uh, the Pelicans. The best, like The best they can do is the eight seed. That's the best they can do because they're going to be locked into that 9-10 matchup, which means they so can they, only so play for the eight seed. In the first round. Yeah, if they get the Nuggets, I don't think. Wait, if they really get the concerned. seven or eight, if they win that first play, and aren't they the seven seed? But I don't think they can realistically get down. I get, I think mathematically they can get down there, but I don't oh, think they realistically can't get they into can the get it. Yeah. Mm, yeah, that's mm-hmm. what you're saying. They're locked into nine, so that means they're I'm locked. Pretty into sure the they're HP. locked. In, I mean, not mathematically yet, but they're pretty much yeah, going to be locked. So into... yeah, no, they can't do anything with Nuggets. Well, they actually, pray. you know, the Suns are playing like shit. Maybe the, sun, the you know, maybe Suns, you the Suns will fall enough right now. Yeah. Yeah, so that maybe, was yeah, maybe that's right. Tender to be on our our rundown today was the quotes coming out of the, the Suns. Suns. Game after they uh, blew that huge lead. But I want to read this D'Angelo Russell quote. D'Angelo Russell, of course, shooting 44.8% from three in March. Quote, I just think we're an unpredictable team. So it depends on which team you get. Depends on which team we are defensively, offensively as a unit. Some guys are better than others some nights. Some guys have bad <laughs> nights. It just depends on what team we're going to be when we're in full effect like tonight. Obviously, no LeBron, but I think we'll be hard to beat Waz. <laughs> I mean, he's telling the truth that like... um. Yeah, I, like they've been scoring recently, which is always nice with the Lakers. There's been like a struggle for them to score for years now. So it's nice when they're getting some buckets. But I don't know. If they can't get out of a Nuggets first round series, they're toast. Yeah. Like the Nuggets, not only are the Nuggets obviously better 
for some reason, Mike Malone fucking hates the Lakers. And they just crush them every single time they play. Like, it's like they get a sick satisfaction out of kicking the Lakers' asses. And so that's the, like, the, the, the Nuggets are so motivated against the Lakers. They hate them. And, yeah. you know, by the way, the Lakers are the last team to beat a healthy Nuggets in the playoffs. 2020. 2020. Yeah, the the bubble chip. I mean, they have, a, they have a better chance if the Wolves or the Thunder jump to Hell the one yeah. feed. Yeah, they no, got to pray for that. I don't think they could beat the Thunder, but I, you know, I, the Wolves I are banged think, up. I, no they, cap. I don't even think they, they could be. I think they will beat the Thunder if really? they play them. Yeah. yeah. I do. The size like, I think, thing I think it's un, I think it's a unreasonable. real problem for the Thunder. I agree, but I also don't think this Lakers team is that good defensively, and I don't think they can cover OKC. Nah, they're going to be throwing Rui at them. They're going to be throwing <laughs> Reddish at them. The AD. Come on, LeBron. Come on now. This is why I was auditioning for ESPN. <laughs> In clutch we trust, they yeah. gonna be throwing Rui at them. Wait a second, hold on. You know, you know how you I'm like, gonna be on mind like the your, game. Fuck out of here. Your, ESPN you put, my ass. You put, mind the game did two million on YouTube first episode. You goddamn right I'm auditioning. What's the second episode doing? Yo, numbers. They did numbers. Right. They doing right. numbers, bro. Um Shouts to my man Rich Bozak. It's, you know how you're supposed you to like to produce put your... me. That's it. He produced me. <laughs> yes, we know. We talk about him last week. We, yeah, we, we talk about it every time yes. you bring up LeBron. Your Eskimo <laughs> podcast brothers with LeBron. We get it. <laughs> he had to produce me before he could produce LeBron. You got that right, Mace. You know how like all right. Let's say you get a you get a uh, a pet with your with your girlfriend, right? Yeah, and you want to see which one this pet loves more. So you put mm-hmm. the pet in the middle of the room. You yeah. go to one side. She goes to the other, and you guys are calling the pet, and you see who do they come to, right? That's who they love more. Yeah. I got Waz in the middle of a room. On one <laughs> side, I've got Clutch, okay? <laughs> the other side, I've got the CCP. <laughs> oh, who's getting Waz? Who's getting Waz now we're talking. Hey, man. hey listen. <laughs> now that CCP is the Sophie's got, choice. CCP got a lot more money, baby. They got a bigger bag. They do have wow. a bigger bag. <laughs> They got a lot bigger bags. Eh? Okay. On the other side of this uh, <laughs> this Crypto.com Arena hallway, we've got the Clippers who were struggling and then they figured it out for like two and a half months. And now they are just 10 and 12 since their Grammy road trip. They have been pretty weak since the All-Star break. Um James Harden saying we got to figure out our identity. Teams are scoring easy on us. Makes it difficult to score offensively. It's a little frustrating. I think we're all trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Uh, Coach Ty Lue had a different take on this, Maze. Real quick, can we unpack the Harden statement where he's blaming the defense for him not being able to score? I mean, he d- well, he, look, he's playing defense, okay? He closed out on Kawhi Leonard the other game. <laughs> Oh my defense. god, he's well. his own team. Well, it's still defense. Him. It's still defense. I didn't say against which team. I said he's playing okay. defense. All right. So I wa- I wonder if Ty Lu got fed the identity quote from Harden before this answer. Because mm. he says, So identity for us, it's gotta be toughness, mm-hmm. which means physicality, mental and physical toughness, a high powered offense. We can score in a lot of different ways. And we got to have a defensive mindset. And so right now, do we have an identity? I think, yeah, we're soft. When we were in 26 and five, we had a great identity. So you can't pick and choose when you want to lead. You can't pick and choose when you want to have identity. You can't pick and choose when you want to do things the right way. Mm. Mm. The Clippers play like a group. Remember the, remember the Lakers team, the first three-peat, or the only three-peat, I guess, when they had that mediocre regular season, like finished like 22nd in defensive in defense. efficiency, then were yeah. like 15-1 and one or 16-1, and one, whatever the fuck it was, in the playoffs. Like the Clippers play as if they've achieved all of that. Yeah. Like they're coming off of three straight finals as a group. Like, and yeah. they've shown all this championship medal, and this is like, ah, oh, don't worry. We got this. We've, we've proven that we can just kick ass when it's time to show up and flip the like, switch. And, You've the Clippers never are like, look, dick. we know we're struggling this month, but we do have 2002 Shaq when the playoffs start. Like, that's what they think they've got. You guys have achieved dick. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Nothing as a unit. And most of you guys individually have never done anything in mm-hmm. the postseason, especially not recently. 
Like the last time Russ was on a team that did something impressive in the playoffs and he was a catalyst was 2016. That was eight years ago. What damn? What team was he on at that point? He was the king of the prairie back then. <laughs> was before he no, asked the king of the prairie. No, he was the prince of the prairie. The that was before. He, he was the prince of the prairie. KD uh, was the king of the prairie, and yeah. then he kicked those he kicked Who, those okies in their teeth. Do you think that Shea has taken that title? No, he gave nah. it to Gordy. No, he can't. Okay, Shea what about Chet? You, Shade, Shade can't because you got to remember, hashtag Russ stayed. Right, yeah. Even though he demanded a trade, <laughs> Russ stayed. So and, that then, was, and, then later, and, then later, and then later was traded. <laughs> yes, and then later demanded a trade. But that was the, that. No, but you don't understand. Russ stayed. He did stay. No, Look but you don't understand. Russ stayed. It's and then extension. demanded a trade. Yeah, misses. Mm-hmm. Speaking of Russ, can he save... The Clippers, because he's been out for a while and he's I, coming back. I think the best player saving you, Maze. I hmm? think, I think you, I think he can inject some adrenaline, some competitiveness, some energy in there and help right the ship. I don't think he can save them, but I do think his presence matters. It matters, but it, it, mostly but because it means he, less Bones Highland. But that's, but that to me shows what the kind of problems they have. Oh, for sure. Oh, that, I you mean, know, look. when your best players, to quote the great James Brown, couldn't lead a horde to, whore to bed, like uh, you got to count on your sixth best guy to be a leader. By the way, James Brown, I don't think he ever said that. That's like one of those. You ever see like a fake <laughs> quote attributed to Malaprop Lincoln? Kids. Fuck yeah, them kids. Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that wasn't um, James Brown, but you get the point. Mm hmm. So are the Clippers going to be okay? Who goes deeper in the playoffs? Clippers or the Lakers? Or the Lakers? Yeah. They're both getting bounced in the first round. Okay. But who? But the but Lakers you the, are you making do have the, the Lakers, first round. You do have the Lakers making it. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Why not? Well, um, well I mean, because they're not good. I mean, yeah. I want, that's why <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, they, Man, could the very, Lakers, they could very easily okay. lose to the Warriors in that Have game. A, let's go back to the Waz is in the middle of Crypto Arena with two mm-hmm. parties, right? Mm-hmm. Waz either has to go towards unpredictable or he has to go towards a team that's soft. Oh, he's going Which would you rather be? Unpredictable. Sure. 100%. Mm. I just can't get with the Clippers, man. And like, I feel like they're going to get smoked by the Pels if they play them. If the Pels are healthy, they're going to kick their asses. They're going to bully these guys. James Harden is already talking his shoulder shit. Ooh, do you think that, do you think the Clippers or the Pelicans at full strength and at their best? Who, who like let's say Clippers are playing like they did during that 26 and 5 stretch. Pelicans are playing at their very best, which has been like kind of like the last month and they're and both teams are very healthy. Who are you taking then? I'm taking the Pelicans. They're younger. Wow. They're more athletic. They're more versatile. They're more physical. Mm. Uh, they're they're less jump shot reliant. You know, um, they have a guy that can actually get to the cup and score. Uh, I, like I love Kawhi. I love Paul George. These guys are jump shooters. You know, well, I mean, that, I'll take. I would still, I would still take the Clippers in that scenario because of Kawhi, but. That's strictly because I believe in Kawhi. Kawhi I don't believe anybody else. Kawhi got a bulging dick in his back. Come on now. Bulging disc. You know what I meant to say. I know. I remember this was. (laughs) This wasism. I mean, I think that would be a very entertaining series. I think Pelicans Clippers... Yeah, could go six yeah. or seven, and I think it could. I be, mean, that's what I mean. It's going to be lock them into four or five because yeah. I don't. I don't think the Clippers are going to fall below five. I think they'll write the ship enough. The rest. I, of the I think. Oh, I think man. that'll be an interesting, interesting matchup. And yeah, it's going to yeah. come down to like. Why does your coach have to call you soft in a press conference? I don't in know. March. He's mad. Clearly, it's yeah. annoying. They're losing the bums. Re- remember, this was a coach. Who almost had a heart attack coaching the Cavs? Had to step away for health reasons. And came he's back, fed, and he and he's fed, he did. He came back, and now he's fed up with the Clippers. 
<laughs> no, he's all right. No, you guys are soft. Can't do it. Uh, make yeah. sure you are subscribed to Patreon, patreon.com slash count the dings. Make sure you are checking out everything from the OG pod, both Mondays and Wednesdays. Make sure you check out Cinephobe Bomb. Everything we got, the mailbag, the Patreon, the rewatch, every single damn thing we got. And don't forget, we got that merch store. That's right. You got to get your Amin jump shot, busted jump shot T, busted be around jump forever. shot hoodie. It's only available for the next two weeks. You want to make sure you get your twisted gnarled fingers on the follow through that somehow (laughs) sent the ball the other direction that no one really understands how we defied the laws of physics get that Mm -mm. merch also check out the carl weathers count of monte fisto cinephobe limited edition merch it's very exciting stay tuned